I have always enjoyed creating things. I learned how to code so I can build my own apps. I learned how to make videos so I can start my own YouTube channel. And now I'm learning how to design in 3D so I can build my own products. Hey, my name is John and welcome to my latest side quest. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest, I bought a 3D printer with no experience because I was influenced online. I fell down the YouTube rabbit hole of watching 3D printing videos and there are so many videos showing how easy it is, how approachable it is to learn. I think it's just so amazing that you can print out really high quality objects from the comfort of your own home, like from this tiny little printer behind me. And now that I have a 3D printer, it really is as cool as I imagined. You can actually find a design in the app, click print, and before you know it, you have a physical product in your hands. There's literally so many things you could find and print online and it's all for free. But what I'm really interested in and what really excites me about having a 3D printer is learning how to build my own designs and eventually being able to build my own products. I'm still at the very beginner stage, like I literally just bought this printer, so I'm excited to share my journey with you all. Hopefully you can see this, but this is my first ever 3D printed design that I made from scratch. And I was able to make this after watching just two tutorials. And what's cool is that if you tap your phone on this, it'll actually pull up my YouTube channel. It's kind of hard to see on camera because it's white on white, but it's the YouTube play icon. And the reason why I wanted to make this is because I'm actually going to my first ever YouTube creator event in New York City. And I figured because it's a YouTube creator meetup that people will want to like network with each other. And I figured this would be a really fun and easy and cool way to share my channel with other people. And I think if I can figure out a few of the design issues that I'd actually print out more of these just to like hand out to other people and hopefully make friends that way because networking is really hard for me. <laughs> There's a few things on here that I definitely want to fix, but before we get to that, I want to show you my 3D printing setup. Because I don't have any experience with 3D printing, I wanted something super easy and reliable and just easy to use because I'd rather just focus on printing stuff rather than trying to like fix the printer or fix any issues that happen. There's actually a lot of 3D printers in the market, but I decided to go with the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini because Bamboo Lab is known for being great for beginners. But I bought the A1 Mini combo, so it comes with the printer and also an AMS unit, which is going to allow me to print in multicolor. Once I set up the AMS unit, I can print this out in red and I'll have the white play button so it will actually look like the YouTube logo. This is my entire 3D printing setup. I really love how aesthetic and organized everything is. I have my A1 Mini up top. I have my build plate right here which is what you actually print things on. Up here are filament swatches which is great for seeing the actual color of the filament in person before you go ahead and buy it online. And if you are looking into getting into 3D printing, I highly recommend you get some tools from the sponsor of today's video, Hodo Mid Snap Block, a set of three electric toolkits for all your DIY needs. The screwdriver kit it comes with a 56 piece bit set. It has a brushless motor and a built in LED light. The mini rotary tool kit is a 38 piece set. It has seamless speed control and you can use it wired or wireless. The mini drill kit comes with 20 pro grade drill bits and it has a powerful torque with three speed control. All the tools come in this pen shape and they pop in and out really easily. What's cool is that you can set these up any way you like. And as someone who is learning how to build my own products, I can really appreciate how beautiful and functional these tools are. When it comes to the design, I think it says a lot that I prefer leaving them out in my setup and not putting them away because one, I use them a lot, but two, they actually add to the aesthetic of my setup. So the drawers are from Ikea. I'm pretty sure it's the best unit. I already had these in my living room, which is why everything matches, which is nice. And basically the top drawer I use for tools. These are really high quality clippers and they're really sharp and they're great for kind of tuning up the 3D prints. And this is a digital caliper so you can measure things really precisely. I also bought some magnets because I want to 3D print things with magnets in them. I also bought this blowtorch, but I didn't realize that you have to buy the gas separately. So I still haven't used this yet. I also have this X-Acto knife kit. I have another flesh cutter. I have Gorilla Glue and these are NFC tags which is what I placed into my 3D printed object so that when you tap on it it opens up my YouTube channel. And then one last thing I want to show is that to the side of my printer I have a drill bit set from Hoto and you can kind of see just how thoughtful they design their products. I love how everything has a specific place so it doesn't get lost and also on this side is then oops <laughs> on this side is the drill and it still has stickers on it because I want to film an unboxing but that'll be for later and I'll post it on my Instagram and TikTok so be sure to follow me on there if you want to see it. And then in this bottom drawer, I already have a ton of filament that I pre-purchased because I already knew what I wanted to print. I knew what colors I would want and I knew what materials I would want. So I just did a bulk order to save on shipping and I'm so glad I did because the prices of filament have increased thanks to the tariffs. So I really looked out on that one. This is going to be the red filament that I'm going to use for the YouTube button. 
in. Now for the fun part, which is finally setting up the AMS unit. This is the AMS unit itself. You can see it has four different spools so you can print objects up to four different colors and everything is nice and color coded. The original AMS legs are just too big for my space. I found this vertical stand online so it stands up straight and saves up a lot of space. And I was actually able to print this on my A1 Mini. You can see how big of an object it is and it fit completely on my printer. So that's kind of cool. And then also this is what the supports look like. And supports are needed because otherwise the printer would just be printing in thin air. These supports are pretty big so you could kind of just like rip them off with your hands like that. And I don't know if you can see it on camera but there's some strings hanging here and this is what the blowtorch would be good for to like blow those away. This is all I need to set up the AMS unit and because everything is nice and color coded and because I've seen so many videos of people unboxing and setting up their units I really don't even have to read the manual for this. And then my plan was actually to have the AMS sitting right here so that way it doesn't really take up too much space on this Part because I would love to keep this space for my tools and also for whenever I'm printing stuff. Um, I, I usually have other tools up here as well. The only thing is I'm not sure if all the cables are gonna fit. As you can see, my plan didn't work because now the cables are kind of pulling on the AMS unit because the height difference is too big. So sometimes the simplest solutions are the best solutions. So I'm just gonna put a box up here and then I'm gonna double check that I'm able to go all the way to the other side with no issues. Super bright, shiny red, which I think is perfect for the YouTube logo. So you have to be careful when you take these out because it wants to unravel. And when it unravels, it actually can cause issues with the printer because the spool will start jumping around. So you gotta be careful with that. You wanna clip off the part that has tape because it can mess with the printer as well. So these are a lot of things that you can just learn as you go. Well, what's nice is that it actually does snaps in place like that and then you just feed it in and then here is the white color that I had on earlier I'm just gonna plug it back in down here and yeah I think that's good let's give it a try you can see like when it changes colors it kind of spits out a lot of filament to make sure that the colors aren't blending. Otherwise, you know, you could end up with like a pink play button. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks really nice and sleek. Pretty cool, not bad for my first time. I just realized I didn't really explain how this is going to be used, but basically I looked at the YouTube creator page to see their past events. And basically at all their events, they hand out these lanyards that guests wear. And I thought it'd be really cool to make a pin so people can have like a little YouTube button on their lanyard and basically people can tap and view their channel. The only problem is that I don't know how to make a pin and so I basically made a clip, a makeshift clip. You basically just slide it on and it kind of relies on friction to not fall off. So definitely not the best design, but it's all I know how to make with the skills I have and I thought it would be good enough, but I realized that you know, people aren't really going to do anything with these afterwards and I don't want to create a lot of waste. So I think my final design of this is going to be a keychain so that people can wear it on their lanyards on the event and then when they're done using it, maybe they could like put it on their keychain or they could put it on their backpack or whatever. Updating the design was actually pretty straightforward. I used Tinkercad, which is a free web-based 3D software. All I had to do was add a logo to the back and I added a loop so that there was something to attach to the keychain. In the printing software, I had the print pause halfway through so I can add the NFC tags and I put it all together with a keychain making set from Amazon. One side looks great and the other side looks not so great but honestly I'm really happy with how these turned out especially for it being my first time. I just think it's so cool that I can make my ideas come to life now like actual real physical tangible products. If I had more time I'd be able to figure out how to make the design smooth on both sides but I'm flying to New York City tonight so you'll have to subscribe to see what happens next. Thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one.